Metal Jesus rocks. I'm responding to your video, pal. I got eyes on you because you made a video that I found pretty interesting and I wanted to share my two cents on it. In case you missed Mr. Metal Jesus's video over on his channel, I will have a link to it in the description box down below. Go watch it after you watch this video. But basically, he made a video talking about digital versus physical games. And this is something that it's a topic I've talked a lot about. And over the past you know, few years, I've definitely kind of shifted my stance on it a bit. So I kind of wanted to share my own two cents on this topic. He had a bunch of other people on that video as well, giving their two cents on it. I guess my invite got lost in the mail. Look, I'm a little controversial, but controversy creates cash. Didn't you read the Eric Bischoff book? But all jokes aside, I thought it was a good video, and I just kind of wanted to share my two cents on it because really I feel like this, this whole debate about you know the digital versus physical stuff, the all digital future, all this sort of stuff, I feel like it's very age-centric where we have this debate because if you're not like mid 30s and older you probably don't care about this topic and to some degree you don't understand about this topic because obviously these companies have been making a push to a more digital future and really there are benefits to it and there are reasons behind it you know without this push to to you know digital marketplaces and stuff a lot of these smaller video game companies would not exist a lot of these smaller video games would not exist point blank period indie developers live and die by having this marketplace and i think the all digital marketplace has brought us a lot of really great things look back even to like the xbox 360 era where you had all those sega arcade games readily available on your xbox 360 and it was just like it was so cool it didn't make sense to release daytona usa on a disc the arcade game just by itself but on a digital marketplace it definitely opened up a lot of doors of course the fear is going into the future and really even in the present stage you know if digital takes over we always hear these stories about games being delisted you no longer have access to these games we've talked about it recently on the channel where playstation accounts are getting bugged and all of their digital purchases are gone vamoose kaput goodbye you do not have access to these you cannot re-download these games either because of a glitch and a glitch can happen on any sort of infrastructure with something like this or you know things could get hacked or it could be like you saw with the wii u and the 3ds where these e-shops get shut down and unless you purchase the game on there you don't really have access to it anymore at least within a conventional meaning now one of the reasons why we're seeing this digital push is because of one of course profits but sort of beyond that you know, it, it makes sense for a lot of these smaller games, but people like to look at the data. And when you look at the data between physical and digital game sales, it always is a bit skewed. I don't think the data itself is really very fair because if a game is only released digitally, that still counts in the in the debate of digital versus physical. Like I want to see it where a game is released physically and digitally, and then what the split is between those games. I don't think a game that's only digitally released should be a part of that conversation because there's no other option. I don't think a game that is a limited physical release should be a part of that equation either because obviously it's not going into brick and mortar stores. You can't buy it on Amazon. You can't buy it at GameStop and stuff like that. You're not going into your Walmart to pick up this, this game or anything. So I feel like that conversation should really really be about you know a game that is released everywhere physically and a game that is released digitally but even if you look at some of those metrics especially on certain systems you're going to see a skewed perspective because of the fact that I mean digital is on the rise and I was definitely someone really up until the last generation it was like oh this sucks you know physical games are the way to go blah 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 and there are benefits to physical games let's be realistic about it you own that product in your hand should you choose to sell that product on a secondary market you can get value for that or if you want to trade that in for something else a different game on a different platform you have the option to do that whereas with the digital game you don't have that option and at least not as of yet but i really feel like this whole conversation you know, it's kind of interesting because a lot of the old guard, when it comes to stuff like this, you know, they were around for the era of the PC game 
where you used to buy PC games until all these digital storefronts came along, you know, what, 20 years ago? And within those 20 years, roughly, you know, PC gamers have just moved completely on from it. You know, they're not really concerned about having the physical product anymore. So why do console gamers still have this sort of mentality? I think it's just a bit of comfort food. You know, I, I think it's just comforting to have something to hold in your hands because you, you're like, I own this forever. But then we get into the question of, well, do you? Because a lot of modern games require you to have an internet connection in order to play them. A lot of modern games require patches that you have to download. A lot of modern games are just a disc and you have to install the game from a server anyways. So there's really nothing on the disc. Like the disc itself is just an access key in order for you to access this game. What's going to happen when these servers go down inevitably? Because like I said, we saw it with the Wii U and the 3DS and those still feel like current systems for a lot of people what's going to happen when those you know servers go down and you no longer have access to what's available on that disc how do you really have an advantage are you really coming out better in the long run you know it's hard to say and that's why i always preach about emulation like this is why emulation is important right now I cannot go buy a Wii U game or a 3DS game that will support Nintendo and make Nintendo money. It's all a secondary market. And when you look at the secondary market, there's a lot of supply and demand. A lot of retro games cost a lot of money. I'm not paying a lot of money for a retro video game. That It's, it's not justifiable for most people. So that's where emulation comes into play. And emulation is a digital thing. Companies themselves use emulation to give you products on their storefronts so i don't it's just weird to me how like emulation just has this negative piracy connotation when how is it piracy if you don't actually own it how is it piracy if i can't provide the company with you know with money for making this game a lot of some of these companies don't even exist anymore so you know it's a it's an interesting topic though because for me personally, you know, I, it pains me to say this, but I don't really buy physical games on my PlayStation 5 or my Xbox Series X. I don't. I get a lot of review copies, granted, but when I get the latest and greatest game, I'm probably buying it digitally because there's really no point in my mind of where I will need a physical product for this. Like, yeah, I could recoup some money if the game itself becomes extremely rare, but I just don't see that being a, a viable option, especially if you have to consider the fact that a lot of these things are contingent on online servers being around. So by the time the rareness sets in, they're going to be, you know, paperweights. It's going to be like Mag was on the PlayStation 3. And that's why you could buy that game for $2 all day, every day at every video game convention. That could be like a sealed copy of it, too. Really, the only system that I second guess on with, an, is, um, with buying physical games is the Nintendo Switch. Because a lot of those games do have everything on the cartridge, but some of them don't. You know, most of your first party games do, but a lot of third party games don't. They require external downloads of things like that. Do you think magically in 10 years you're going to be able to access a server that will let you get what's on that cartridge and download the rest of the game onto there? Like, probably not. So maybe instead of, you know, being so hesitant towards the all digital future, because I do feel it's coming. You know, I, I think it's an inevitability at this point in time. Maybe instead of being so hesitant towards it, people should start trying to find ways to adapt to it and to make sure that games can still be played, you know, years later and stuff like that. Games that are maybe contingent on online servers. And that's where, you know, the emulation community is really going to step in and be able to do something with this. I mean, you see online games get resurrected all the time. We're probably gonna have to start doing that for single player games that require an online connection as well. I'm looking at you, Gran Turismo 7. Hell, I'm still playing Gran Turismo 4. I just downloaded the remastered edition of that game on a PS2 emulator. I'll be making a video on that at some point in time. Let me know your interest level in the comment section down below. But that thing is freaking awesome, dude. It looks like a PS4 game now. Like, it looks absolutely incredible what these people have done. But I feel like, you know, just kind of debating this and bitching about it, like, it's not going to really fix anything. 
you know, I think we need to start thinking of solutions. And obviously, I'm not the person to do that. I I could barely work a computer and editing software. I mean, look at some of my old videos where there was burps and mistakes left in them. At least I've gotten better about that. But, you know, I, I think it's it's more so, yeah, it's a problem. But what's the solution going to be? And when are we going to figure out the solution? And how are we going to figure out this solution? Because I feel like the companies themselves... They're going to be a little bit hesitant with coming up with solutions for them because they want to resell you those games. And if they could put it in a subscription service or a digital purchase or a physical purchase, they're going to find a way to do it. We're in the time of remasters and remakes, folks. Let me know in the comment section down below, though. What are you thinking about this topic? I know I kind of went all over the place, but there's a lot of stuff. Like, I, I don't feel like it's a very cut and dry thing like some people make it out to be. I feel like there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of gray area in this debate. And in this conversation, because it's not really a debate, it's more of a conversation. But I, I feel like, you know, people just go, oh, oh, physical only or oh, digital only. And it's like, well, there's there's positives and negatives about both. You need to look at the bigger sphere when it comes to this. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. Like I said at the start, go check out Metal Jesus's video. I'll have a link to it in the comment section down below. Invite me next time, Metal Jesus. Jesus Christ. Are, what's your relation to Jesus Christ, though? I could have just insulted like one of your family members. And as always, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hit the bell as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.